into just gameplay knowledge and experience. But you can do it too. Not super hard. You just got to have a little bit of practice and uh, understanding of some of the basic mechanics. All right, so we are back at the evac shelter. Like I said, I'm not going to try to set up here. So let's just uh, close the vehicle up. We've got 2.9 liters. That should get us back if we don't get uh, sidetracked or forced into any weird detours. Um, did I grab a rubber hose to bring with me? I do not have a rubber hose with me. All right. I want a rubber hose. <clears throat> hmm. Let's go down south and get a rubber, grab a rubber hose. I need a rubber hose to siphon gas out of vehicles. So if we happen to pull up next to a vehicle that has gas in it, I can very quickly siphon it just to make sure we have enough gas. Even if I don't use it in this vehicle, I want... Ooh, we got a body site nearby with a scientist. A science body site. All right, that's good. Even if I don't use it in the current vehicle, I want to have it as a resource at the base um, for other vehicles we might use or for tools that, uh, that burn gas. So we're going to go down to a, a local house and just smash up a fridge and grab a rubber hose right after we beat a scientist to death. Um, they're squishy. I could probably do it with my normal martial art, but let's let's do the fire axe. Let's uh, drop the two backpacks. And I shouldn't need to use uh, terrain for this guy. Okay, Royal Jelly. That is an awesome find. Alright, Royal Jelly is basically the Cataclysm equivalent of a heal spell. It heals everything. I'm more likely a cure spell. It doesn't heal hit point damage. It cures almost every negative condition in the game. Not all of them quite, but uh, a very large number of them. So you definitely want to get Royal Jelly anytime you run across it. Make sure to pick it up. I don't really care about the rest of this stuff for now. I'm not going to dissect this guy. Alright, Amoebic Mold. That indicates a body site. Now that it's daytime, we can see that stuff. Get off the body site, Amoebic Mold. <laughs> he's, he's squatting on it. Come on. Wander off of that. I don't want to start hitting you. You're, you're usually friendly. Alright, you're going to... You let me have the stuff, are you? One ID card. I'll take it. Nothing else I care about. Looks like that's it. One body site out of uh, that location. That's all right, though. We got a science ID card. That will get us into a uh, laboratory. Do -do 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 -do. All right. So zombies coming my way again. I'm. You're curious how I'm evaluating and making my decisions. I'm first looking here. Well. Not quite true. As I'm traveling with the character, I am focusing a lot on my mini-map and the dots that I'm seeing there. That shows me where the enemies are. So I'm, I'm moving without safe mode most of the time. Um, but I'm not holding the key down all that often without a safe mode on because that's a good way of suiciding. But uh, that's my first evaluation is the location of the dots. Then I glance at this real quick. Nothing is red colored. The names are not red. That is a very quick reference to tell me there's nothing dangerous in the area. At worst, there's the Feral Runner. And then finally, I look for specific things like Feral Runner. And then I'll actually scroll the screen around and look where things are positioned and who's where and all that kind of stuff. But at a quick glance, I can tell just really fast whether I'm in any kind of trouble or not from the minimap and from this listing. All the zombies are rated. They have danger ratings. And uh, currently, as you can see, the squirrel is kind of a... Eh, damn it, I can't quite point at it right. <laughs> the squirrel in that box is um, a darker color. That's a dark gray versus these other names being kind of a light gray. That's a representation of their danger level. Squirrels are not dangerous. Regular zombies are only lightly, moderately, or lightly dangerous. And it colors up from there to bright red which is super dangerous like predators and chicken walkers and hulks and things like that and uh you're leveling up your skill ups are actually linked to those danger levels if you're trying to get melee experience for example you got to be fighting tougher and tougher things in order to continue to get experience low level things will only level you up to about level three or four then you have to graduate to more dangerous foes in order to continue to raise your martial skills um, combat skills, dodge, that kind of stuff. 
All right, refrigerator. Where is the refrigerator? Where is the refrigerator? Take an axe to it? Nah, let's not take an axe to it. Let's take the crowbar to it. Die, refrigerator! All right, there's our rubber hose. That's really all I needed here. Uh, yep, that's all I need here. Nothing else in the kitchen. Now I just need a quiet spot for a second where I can get my stamina back. All right, stamina is full. And let's go out the front door and take a look around. Who's out here? Still nobody particularly dangerous. Don't remember, did I check this vehicle? No wheels. Road roller has got the drum. Got a working security system, so that's not going to be useful. Big advantage to rolling around during the daytime is I can see quite a distance, so I can spot body locations, I can see vehicles and do a quick evaluation from range, all that kind of stuff. Downside being the zombies can see me too. Oh, used bookstore. There's another one of those magic bookstores. And there's an office tower in the middle, not far away. Ooh, that will pretty much get me this whole whole area. If I go to the top of that office tower, and I got housing I can use for cover, almost all the way to it. Um, hmm. As you just saw when we went north to the office tower, there you can see kind of the size of the map area that it uncovered. Um, without binoculars or a telescope, so yeah, I think that would cover pretty much this entire area, which would be helpful. That'll help me make some decisions. I think I'm gonna try it. I think we got a pretty good setup here to do it because I got houses I can move through. If I go house to house, then down here, then it's just a quick dash across to another house, and then straight into the tower. And then I can either go straight back out again or cut across and go up this way. Either way, I think it's a pretty good, pretty easy run. So I think I'm going to try it. We're going to try a daytime raid down into the uh, the office tower, see if we can get the map done. That will help out a lot in uh, deciding how I'm going to approach this. Alright, so right now I'm not actually watching my character main screen. I'm watching my mini-map as I move. Uh, let's put my sunglasses on so I don't get the glare effect. Whoops, didn't mean to be running. Bad form. Bad form. Oh, firemans. They want to kill firemans. Mmm, firemans. I don't have my halogen bar yet. <sighs> no, let's not. I, I don't have the health to dork around with that. Let's hop into this house real quick where all the crows are hanging out. The crows will help uh, distract the zombies that are following me. <laughs> Alright, so we've been in this house. Let's go hide in the garage momentarily. Wait here, get my stamina back again. As as always, stamina is life. All right, full bar of stamina. Now we'll use the winch to pop the door. Um, don't care about pretty much any of the stuff out here. Slow zombies are no danger. I may just be able to wander straight down the street. Uh, let's put away our crowbar. I see a... thought I saw a tech. No tech? Eh, maybe not a tech. Yeah, I'm just gonna work. I'm gonna walk right down the middle of the street. They're not gonna uh, send shock zombies at me. I guess I'm not gonna worry about it. Alright, so we got one more house and then the, uh, the tower's behind it. So we'll head into that house, use it for cover to break what's following me currently. Anything to eat? Some root beer and pickles. I like it. Let's have uh, let's have some pickles. Some more pickles. Some more pickles. And a few more pickles. And one more pickle. All right, we'll we'll have all the pickles. We are sated and turgid. Ooh, razor blades. Uh, I decided not to go through that door because of the noise over here. This is the office tower right here, and I've got a convenient crossing point right there. So I'd rather not get more attention than I need. Do, do, do. 
<laughs> does Vorm ever need to breathe, or does he hold his breath when he talks for five minutes straight? No. I, uh, I long ago mastered the art of uh, talking for a very long time, <laughs> continuously, while typing, while answering questions from uh, customers on customer service and technical support lines. Everybody curious where I, I honed my, my conversation or speaking, speaking skills. That's where. Long customer service technical support career. Both on the uh, in the chair side and in the uh, team management, office management side. But um, yeah, I, I can talk nonstop pretty much. My voice has been developed over literal decades of uh, nonstop <laughs> 10, 12 hour shifts. Doing nothing but talking and typing and... Uh, answering questions simultaneously. That's why I can uh, play a complex game while chatting, while plotting my moves, uh, without devolving into ums and ahs and awkward silences and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what would be your weapon of choice in a cataclysm? Oh, a real-life cataclysm like this? Um, spears. <laughs> spears. And more spears. It'd be like a spear with a uh, kind of a side... I don't know, kind of like a, how to describe it? It's a spear, but it's going to have a little side handle on it towards the butt end that you can grip with uh, your hands as well. So kind of like a, a long spear with a cross piece, I guess, uh, towards the handle. So you can uh, better utilize it. Yeah, definitely spears. <laughs> Just spear them right through, the eye, right through the eyes or into their, their brain case. Whichever. Never understood up close melee weapon use in uh, zombie apocalypse movies and fiction that's uh, that's some silly stuff people liking the bike idea i'm leaning that way <laughs> the all pike <laughs> all pike's too heavy not the all pike just a nice metal spear good solid spear with a, a point on the end that you can stab into zombies heads and faces but uh, that you can also retract easily without uh, losing the weapon. <laughs> throwing sticks? Nah, throwing sticks are hard. Hard to use in real life. Can't even imagine. Uh, what doesn't the uh, the Royal Jelly Cure? Uh, it's too big a list. I, I don't remember. I remember I had problems with... Um, what was I using? Uh, I can't remember now. There was something I couldn't fix with Royal Jelly. It, it escapes me now. But um, there are some problems that it won't make go away. But the big ones, the the, the danger ones, are, are all going away. You can instantly cure yourself of fungal infections, of uh, parasites, of colds and flus. All that kind of stuff just goes away. The only way to get turret mounts, looting them off of other vehicles, yes. I don't believe they're base craftable. There's quite a few out there, so that's usually where I always end up getting mine. Can you make them? I've never tried. I don't think I've ever tried to make a turret mount. It's just, by the time I'm in that phase, I've already found or passed over so many military vehicles that uh, I've never really had a need for actually crafting a, a turret mount from scrap. <laughs> You're running, Vorm? Yeah, I do that. I, I run, I walk, I run, I walk. I hear the first faint, heavy breathing, then look up and, and chide myself that I'm running. It's okay. Yeah, I'm trying to catch up back on chat again. <laughs> I spent too much time chatting earlier. I'm trying to balance it back out with actual, actual gameplay. Pickles for the win. I do like the pickles. Pickles are yummy. I wish the uh, the call centers and the land centers in the game actually had computer books. I have not yet found a computer book in one of those, which seems silly to me. Export customer service, the headaches, and the face palm must be overcharged. Yeah, you have no idea. I have my, uh, my t-shirt that says I survived providing technical support for the general public <laughs> for Microsoft. Uh, which one was it? Uh, Windows ME, Windows Millennium Edition. <laughs> oh God, was that fun. I had to provide technical support for Windows ME for computers sold at Walmart. I will let you imagine the horror.
Yeah, I'm thinking of doing the motorcycle. I think that's where I'm leaning with this this challenge in particular. I think the motorcycle will be the better the better served. Yeah, it was Hewlett Packard Computers sold at Walmart with Windows ME during the old <laughs> the whole uh millennial computers are going to all die and crash and the world's going to burn because of the uh the calendar counting error. <laughs> uh, that was funny. Windows ME was some bad stuff. By far the worst consumer <laughs> operating system Microsoft ever put out. It was a nightmare. Ninety eight was awesome compared to ME. <laughs> but yeah, that's the kind of environment I honed those uh those skills in. That's also why I'm so uh fairly calm and relaxed and uh, easygoing about this kind of stuff. Uh so notice I mentioned the color coding earlier. So the zombie soldier is a brighter color, the shock zombie is shading into red. Again, denoting danger level of the uh the, the enemies that you're facing. So I care about the shocker. I always closely make sure I know where the local shockers are. So shocker's no problem. Yeah, Vista was pretty bad, but nowhere near the dumpster fire that uh, ME was. Vista was more useless than bad. <laughs> Alright, let's go find us another, another stairwell. Is this the same orientation as earlier? That leads into the uh, the elevators that don't work. Nope. There we go. Alright, we're gonna get the rooftop view. Hey, Mr. Zombie, that's not a convenient location for you. Or you. Um, yeah, come on out. You can follow me over this way, I guess. Okay, there we go. Another tower off in the distance. Check our ground level. What do we got? Oh, we got a lab. We got a lab in the distance. Looky there. That, um, that makes things a little more interesting. <laughs> There's a military outpost just north of the lab. Up against the water. I don't often see that occur. Buried in the middle of the forest. Right up against the water. <laughs> We must do uh, waterborne activities out of there. Train some seals or something. Um. Hmm. I am. I am a little encouraged that we've got some open space finally. At least a little bit. If that continues to be open space out here. That would be really, really nice. The lab. That. Uh, that might change my my view a bit. For this character, how important is it for this guy to get into a lab? There's not too many of the finales that I would care about for this guy. We've already got quite a few books. We've got all the computer books, all the way up to Computers 8. We just got to take the time to actually read them. Um, it'd be really convenient to set up there on the first floor, assuming it's not an ice lab. And it's got proximity to the town. I think if anything, that would be where I would move to next. I would hop to that location for further further expansion or development. But I think by the time I could get there, I'll have already achieved most of the things I would use it for. So planning-wise, eh, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh-oh. Ah, office tower. Um, I'm also kind of amused at this. The three-spot gas station and a three-spot gas station right on top of each other. That's kind of amusing. Got the, uh, the pump station out to the west. Don't care about the hospital. There's a magic shop. It has a magic shop. So we got a used bookstore. That'll have magic books, but a dangerous critter. And we've got a magic shop. Mill surplus could be useful. So yeah, it's not a bad little town. Masardis here. It's got a good mix of uh, various useful buildings. 
<laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, is that amusing? Somebody go get Korg. Corgent, are you here? <laughs> I don't think he's here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Who knows what I'm looking at? Who knows why I'm laughing my ass off about this? <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh my goodness. You got it. The Spider Queen Lair. <laughs> we have a demon Spider Queen Lair nearly dead center in the middle of the town. <laughs> oh, that is funny. At least she doesn't have 10 times the hit points anymore. <laughs> oh, I can't believe we've got a demon spider queen lair sitting right in the middle of the town. And it's just below me. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's literally, I'm here. It's right here. No, they don't. <laughs> Spiders don't fight with zombies. It's really annoying. Arachnids don't register on the zombie radar. Well, that is amusing. Demon Spider Queen Lair sitting right in the middle of town. Um, yeah. Well, other than that, things are pretty interesting in town. That that definitely raises the uh, cachet value of the, uh, the little area here. I'd like to obviously hit the uh, magic store, antique store, recycling center, mill surplus. Maybe the garage is way up there. We've got an electronics store. Yeah, I'd much rather be down here than up at that northern one. But again, I've got the problem of getting the gear out of out of that northern. We've got a lot of accumulated stuff up there. When we make the drive up in the vehicle, if we get up there in one piece and we have a fairly clear route, I might make an attempt to load this vehicle up with uh, the stuff I consider important into the trunk and then try to drive back down out of here and set up either here or, if I think I can do it, push all the way through town and set up in the lab then uh, make trips into town for whatever I might need. The lab would be a lot easier for me to exist in for a period of time while I'm doing my leveling up. Because um, there's zero chance of any interruptions when I'm in the lab. Once I get my initial area cleared. So, yeah. How do I know it's the Demon Spider Queen lair? It's a gray forest tile. As opposed to, like up here, see how... Regular forest is green, swamp is blue, the basin is dark blue. The only gray forest tile, gray F, which is what that is, is the demon spider lair. So, that's how I know. <laughs> I just can't believe where it's positioned. That is hilarious. Definitely going to have to take a screenshot of this and uh, ping it to court and say, or Korg. I got another uh, online friend called Court. I constantly call Korg Court. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the Demon Spider Queen Lair. I'm 100% sure of it. I just think it's hilarious where it's positioned. Right next to the recycling center I wanted to go visit. <laughs> uh... Hmm... Yeah, that seems a little odd for uh, for for map gen placement. <laughs> I mean, you do occasionally, like right here, we have regular forests. But I understand how the map gen led it into that space. I guess if it's just anywhere where a regular forest could go, but um, I don't know how the map gen works for rules on placement and all that. But smack in the middle of the town seems a bit uh, a bit odd. Alright, so what are we going to do here? We made it to the top. I got exactly what I was hoping for. We got the entire area revealed. You can see the value of doing this. I've been This is another thing I've been really pushing new players to take advantage of with the uh, quick tip on how to get to the, the view distance bonus on top of buildings and mentioning it and doing it myself. It, uh, it really, really helps you make plans um, for where you're going to go and what you're going to do and 
what buildings you have options to go get certain materials from. And it's probably more useful to me and or experienced players because as soon as I see this, I instantly recognize most of the buildings that I consider important. Brand new players, ah, it's a big mishmash of colors and letters. Um, they're not going to recognize as much. Then it'll have to take them a lot of time to kind of work their way around and look at each thing to see what the heck is in each location. But um, still has great value for, for midterm, long-range planning, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't think my general plan has changed. Back downstairs, head back to the car, push back to the original base if we can do it without uh, blowing the car up. If it survives it, it's in decent shape, flip around and come back south again. Um, spend a day or two in the basement healing up before the move. And then, yeah, try to push straight through this north-south road down to the lab, I think would be ideal if I can do it. So, I think that's the current, current tentative plan. Um, so I know I got a zombie kind of following me around here. Oh, he didn't follow me far enough. Let's play peekaboo, zombie. Right, you gonna go through there? Alright. That's fine. You gonna follow me all the way down, are you? Nope. Finally lost him. Alright, ground floor. Let's see. So we got a look at the street out here. Recycling center right across the street. So curious to go over there, but so hesitant to get anywhere near the uh, Demon Spider Queen lair. Really don't need to get set on fire right now. So, here's another thing I think new players need to learn or know or understand is the lighting effects. So, right now, well, actually, I think those guys can, no, they can't see me. Yeah, so I'm in the shade back here right now, so these guys can't actually see me. So that's why I walked over here, and I can move around with, with no real consequences until they move in a little further and can start smelling me from my, my, my smell, my stench. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what those guys are from. Not the recycling center. Where, where's the pool? Why, we got a massive number of swimming zombies. Where is the pool? Right there? How did those guys get over there from the pool? That's kind of weird. Huh. Alright. Well, there's the recycling center. Lots of cool things that are at the recycling center. So, that would be the uh, paper bin. That's the one that's going to have books. That would be the battery bin. With a storage, two storage batteries sitting on the ground. That would be the electronics bin. They don't often find useful electronics. That's all I can see for now. I'd like to go look at it, but I'm going to hold off until nighttime before I go over that direction. Alright, nothing too dangerous out that way, but I think I'll, I'll back off and find another route. Hey there, JM Juggler. Thank you very much for the sub. Appreciate that. Cash card and paper. Don't care. Alright, nothing too dangerous in sight. Let's uh let's pop up into this building. Oops. Hitter's kit? Sewing kit. Alright, don't care about a sewing kit. Oh, we got a basement. What kind of basement you got? Sewer rats! Oh, I need to make a video on sewer rats too. <laughs> Activate flashlight. Yeah, we got two sewer rats. That's that's almost perfect. Um, so the thing about sewer rats is they are not super dangerous. They will hit you if you don't have a lot of dodge and or some clothes. This is not an ideal character to try this with. But if you don't have much in the way of dodge skill, I've already got dodge four, so the sewer rats aren't going to help this guy. But if you got Dodge Zero, for example, and you find a basement with sewer rats, go put on a couple of extra layers of clothes. Bulk up. You're not going to kill these. You don't want to kill them. Just wear two or three pants, two or three shirts, cover your various body parts, come back to the sewer rats, and then just stand in place and let them attempt to nibble on you. You'll go from zero to four dodge if you just hold the key down and let time pass while they try to nibble on you. 
They'll only very rarely be able to hit you for any damage. They might damage the useless clothing you've put on. But you'll be able to raise yourself up to level 3-4 dodge in literally minutes. Um, so it's a way of getting really, really easy free dodge training. Is just find a basement with some sewer rats. Let them nibble on you. Again, I've got too much dodge already, so it's not going to help this guy. But, um, yeah, take advantage of it. It's one of the cool little tricky ways you can uh, raise a very, very important skill at almost zero danger to yourself. You just got to know to put on just enough clothing that their occasional nibbles only take a minor hit point or two. Um, and you can very easily get your skill up. So, not important for this guy, though. What do we got up here? Nothing. Don't need that. Go check the bathroom. Any goodies? No goodies in the bathroom. I'm plotting my, my path out of here. We got multiple recycling centers in this town. Usually I'm hard pressed to find one. like to go to that house and then out or the grocery store I guess big old pile out there including a tech and that's just what I can see so far they can't see me yet let's go out the back nice and clear out this way all right dog and some slow zombies and there is a basement in that house I think I already checked did I check this one for I think I checked this one for batteries and it was just that ultralight if I remember right yeah don't need you let's go check what kind of basement this is spider basements um yeah not even gonna stop and look that'll get me in trouble MP3. Eh, don't need to worry about an MP3 player. Nothing in the bathroom. Alright, I don't remember there being anything real dangerous out here, so we'll just uh, walk the rest of the way out. Again, maintaining full stamina. Knowing what's around me, what's dangerous. None of this stuff is dangerous. I'll eventually outwalk it. I don't want them to follow me too far. I don't want to get a crowd close or in reality bubble range of the uh, car. So I'm actually going to switch to run mode for just a short bit. Make sure I, I lose all the pursuit. Then I'll switch back to walk mode before my stamina gets any lower. And I'm only fast moving like this by holding the key down while I'm staring at the minimap. As soon as I see a color appear on the minimap, I instantly stop moving. Otherwise, it's a good way to suicide yourself if you hold down the movement key without having safe mode on. There we go. We are back to the base. Nice and easy. Oh yeah, we're still carrying that Black Dragon book. Forgot about that. So if the plan is to load up and then come back, trunks will hold 162 each. Can't do much in the way of modifying it with my current tool set. Either Pavel Zarimba. Thank you very much for the uh, follow. Welcome. I'm not sure. 300 liters. Eh, it should be enough. I don't have that much accumulated junk at that other location. I'll have to decide on some things to take, but most of it, raw material wise, isn't useful for uh, taking. I'll have plenty in the lab for whatever I might need to work on. So I think I'll just leave the stuff in the back of the vehicle here. Get back down to my slim fighting gear. Which is pretty much that. We don't have any pain or um, hunger, thirst problems. Speed is still good. Still got good bandaging. Yeah, I think it's just about time for us to uh, try to drive back to the base. So, we're going to be driving north. We're going to attempt to get this car all the way up here. All the way along here. And all the way over here. Get it parked somewhere around here without it getting trashed. That's going to be the actual hardest part. We could run into some road situations that do some damage or cause me problems. But the hard part is generally in this kind of a city environment that 
anything that sees me around here is going to follow the vehicle and me all the way to the end point. So I have to be able to deal with whatever comes after me. So typically what I'll do is I'll drive in, park the car, then I'll hop out of the car, go towards anything following me to make sure they all get a good view of me. And then I'll go lose them in the housing or whatever. I'll, I'll send them on a chase the other direction. That way the car is protected from a horde of zombies following me into the base and trashing everything in the area. So you got to think about that kind of stuff ahead of time. Don't just uh, run straight to your base or drive a vehicle straight to your base um, and let the horde of zombies follow you right to that spot. You know, you've got to avoid that. Anytime you're trying to do a, a living situation inside of a city area, you got to very, very carefully consider your activities and your movement and um, what you're going to bring to the location. You got to avoid loud noises. Don't fire guns anywhere near your base. Don't um, do anything like that. And uh, during daylight especially, um, just consider the consequences of your, your actions. <laughs> when did I last check on Molly? Well, Molly's in suspended animation, so <laughs> he's he's fine. Uh, Reality Bubble is uh, putting him into suspended animation, so he, he's got no problems. Let me back up chat here. Been a little while since I caught up. You guys been chatting about, what, Door Fortress and mobile games or something? I got brief looks. What's the weirdest thing you've ever encountered in Cataclysm creature-wise? Uh, I There's not too many things I haven't encountered yet. I mean, some of the stuff is rare, but... Um, I don't know. The weird stuff is uh, probably items like the albino penguins, the chud, um, the the friendly little dog in the bottom of the mines. That's always fun. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> Hospitals are a death trap. Um, yes. It kind of depends on when you're approaching the hospital and knowing how to approach it. New players, early game, stay far, far, far away from hospitals. Yes, they're a death trap. Experienced players, early game, mm, can get some stuff done in a hospital. It takes a bit of luck and a bit of knowledge and how to do it. Um, if you get a hospital that's isolated with, with fields all around it, the my typical strategy is to get a vehicle circle the hospital while honking the horn to get as many zombies to come out of the hospital as possible. And then you Pied Piper them off into some other direction. So you pull the zombies out of the hospital and uh, just drive them off some direction, going nice and slow and weaving back and forth so they keep up with you. And you just lead the biggest part of the horde away from the hospital. Then you speed up and you circle a long way around and you come back. That will remove usually 50-75% of the zombies that are present in the hospital by doing that. Um, and then it's much easier to slip in and do some looting. But um, don't ever go to a hospital expecting to use the auto dock. That's just never going to happen. <laughs> it's just too hard Not I mean, for, for many reasons. A, a lot of the zombies in the hospital are going to be knocking walls and ceilings down. So it's usually a lot of debris if you don't clear it really fast. Um... But if you approach it for the first time into your reality bubble, circle it, lead the zombies out, circle back, jump inside. Here's the tip. This is the front of the hospital, the lightly colored H, which I'm not pointing at, right? I can't quite point at it. <laughs> you see it, the, the, the H in the center in the middle section of the uh, bottom area there. That's the front of the hospital. On the left-hand side, Maybe I can point it. Yeah, right right there. There's a door into the side of the hospital right here. Usually there's nothing out that side unless you've got a situation like this where it's up against a, a city. But um, if you go in that door, you got an entire north-south section. All The whole western side of the hospital north-south is patient rooms. You can get a lot of medicines, stethoscopes, disinfectant, things like that in those areas. Um, that's usually the easiest place to get into, so... Any of the other directions, you got too many zombies, too many, too many angles where you can get too much attention and all that. But uh, that one wall is the the simplest and easiest way to get in and out. <laughs> 
cleanly. So if you do those things, you got a fair chance of getting in. Again, it depends on your character build and your knowledge and all that kind of stuff. But it can be done. But new players, early games, stay far, far away from hospitals. Super dangerous. Um, that was a while back. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Yeah, I've got a fair amount of experience with uh, names from other cultures. I try pretty hard to uh, get it right. I do an awful lot of uh, reading and uh, all that good stuff. And uh, I've picked up a number of things. So, glad I got it right. <laughs> I had to pause for a half second before I actually read the name off. But uh, it, it finally clicked in my brain how that was probably going to be pronounced. Yeah, I've never actually dealt with the Amagara Fault. The Amagara creatures are probably one of the the odder, <laughs> rarer things to deal with. Uh, that's a long chat. Uh, with labs being the go-to endgame location, uh, shifting focus. Uh... Well, the problem with the other endgame stuff is this. There's no reason to go there. That's the problem. Not my fault, too much of the game is concentrated in the laboratories. That's not my issue. That is the content creators and the dev side. They have stuffed so much of the content into labs as the mid-to-end game source for books, for finale rewards, for uh, barracks with all the soldiers and weaponry. There's just so much stuff they've put into the labs that... There is absolutely no reason to go to the other endgame locations. So I fairly often get people asking me about going to the hazardous waste sarcophagus, going to the necropolis, and so on. The issue I have is you're putting your character in danger for no benefit whatsoever. There's absolutely no reason to go there, um, which, which is an issue for me. I have a problem in a game like this where survival and advancement and so on is a large part of the goal... When, in order to go somewhere and survive, you already have to possess or have better than any loot you could possibly get by going there. So, that, that's the issue I have. Is too much of the endgame content is just hard for the sake of hard. Setting things up in such a way that the, the danger and the damage stuff is purposely leveraging problems in the game mechanics in order to be difficult. Um, it's just full of bullets, full of things firing bullets at you, or, or things like that. So it's not challenging from a technical aspect, it's just hard for the sake of being hard, with no reward whatsoever. If there was some benefit to going there, I'd be more interested in it, but there's not really even that much variety, unfortunately. Um, the, the game suffers from end, just lack of endgame variety. Um, even most of the end game content is all just variations on the same thing. So I did Necropolis recently. I gave everybody a taste of that. Um, the problem is hazardous waste facility is part of the NPC quest chain. I never do it. I don't like NPCs. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty consistent and vocal about my, uh, my disdain for NPC behavior. <laughs> so, uh, National Guard Camp, that's another one. That's just stupid hard for the point of being stupid hard. No benefit to going there. Robots that'll kill you even in your power armor. Yay, I guess that's fun for some people, but I, I, <laughs> there's no way to mitigate against it. There's no strategy involved. It's either heavy power armor and don't get shot at, or you die. Where's the strategy? Where's the interest? There's just no real tactical benefit <laughs> or, uh, or entertainment factor there. 
Um, and it's all just down to lack of in-game content and variety. Things kind of peter out at the midpoint, mid to starting end stage. After that, it's either face tank bullets, no face tank bullets. You're either dead or alive. That, that's pretty much it. So with some of the magic stuff being added in Magiclism, hopefully there'll be some more variety of that type. And um, we'll see. But uh, it's, it's really just a matter of the balance of content. It's really, really content heavy in the early game and really, really content light towards the end late game. Um, so we'll see if they eventually uh, work something around that. Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was reviewing chat, and then I was going to get moving again. <laughs> no, that martial art, I've already done most a lot of runs with it. <laughs> I have issues right now with the martial art styles that have any kind of auto counter block, stuff like that, because you end up in uh, stamina death spirals against certain creatures or certain situations. You have no control over anything. As soon as the spiral starts, time just flows forward and you can't stop it. You can't interrupt. You get no further actions. You just are instantly dead. So, bit of an issue. So yeah, a couple of the martial arts are, are kind of dangerously broken given the uh, timing and stamina and speed mechanics that are in-game currently. You're wondering what I'm talking about. Take take two or three giant cellar spiders and take your Zuiquan or your Krav Maga or one or the other two of the, uh, the martial arts and uh, try to fight three or four giant cellar spiders at once and watch what happens. You'll, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> uh, did I get partner yet? Well, here's the status. Um, on Wednesday's stream, as of Wednesday's stream, when it finished, we were at 73.2. 13 average viewers for the prior 30 days. We gained three viewers for that stream. We went from 70 to 73. And that was replacing a 45 average back a month ago when I was doing tests of earlier stream times. So I had some pretty low average numbers because I was starting at like four hours earlier than most of my audience knew about. And I didn't advertise it. Um, so we replaced a 45 average stream with a 100 average stream, and we gained three extra viewer points towards that total. So the idea is if tonight we maintain 100 plus, which we're currently at, and we've been at for uh, a couple hours now, we theoretically will gain a cons uh, relatively same amount, and we should push over the limit. So tonight should be the night that we finally qualify for the partner status. Um, We'll find out as soon as I end the stream and uh, wait a little bit and I get the summary for the stream. If it says 75 or higher, I'll get a little magic button that I can push that will allow me to submit an application for Twitch partner status. Then we wait up to seven days for the uh, acceptance or refusal of my application. So there you go. Oh, I Viper's late again. Oh, man. <laughs> Cool. He didn't miss anything. Just a lot of me chatting. These guys made me take off my hat. They made me talk about my previous work. Jeez. They're just a demanding bunch tonight. Yeah, Dragon Style. Yeah, I think that's another one that has the issue. So there's, there's a bunch of the martial arts you got to be kind of cautious about in the current... Stamina, speed, <laughs> monster mechanics. Otherwise, you get into these death spirals like I was I was describing. So um, that's why I don't do certain things at certain times. I know a lot about things and some things that are broke. And um, that's why I avoid certain situations. But uh, there you go. Yeah, you're too t too late. <laughs> the hat came off. They somebody was asking me about the hat. I took it off. I showed why I wear it. <laughs> Two reasons: one, to protect you guys from the glare off my bald head from the lights that I've got running for the cameras, and uh, two, to uh, the the brim protects my eyes from the camera I've got up high here and uh, keeps me from staring into too many lights at once. Uh, you guys don't know how much I suffer from my art. I, I take a lot of aspirin because uh, staring into bright lights for eight, ten hours at a time and taking a five-minute break in that eight hours is uh, a bit rough on the old, the old eyes and the brain. That's why I have uh, more professional lights on my list of <laughs> upcoming necessary changes if I'm going to keep pursuing this. My, uh, my current lighting solution works well enough, but um, needs to be improved. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, suffer a bit too much from my art. 
No one likes to suffer from art. All right. Um, I think I'm going to take a quick break. Coming up on four hours. Let me go take my uh, my much needed stretching break. I need to uh, refill the old uh, vodka bottles and uh, keep moving. Yeah, it's vodka time. <laughs> Oh, I did, uh, I made a successful day raid. I forgot to mention, I, I made a successful day raid a couple blocks away. So I came back with some loot. There's my loot. Oh, yeah. Good old find. I'm always happy when I find my my 1.8 kilograms of uh, animal crackers. Zombie dog is also very happy. So we've got crackers. I just need to go get my vodka refilled and we'll have some vodka and crackers. Okay, so, uh, yeah, let me get that done. <laughs> there goes Ice Viper again. Alright, time for another uh, triple moose. It's a triple moose time. Thank you very much, Ice Viper. Appreciate the uh, support for the channel. And I'm sure the uh, recipients... Oh, no, Draco Griffin got gifted a sub again. <laughs> How's that guy keep getting subs? Yeah, I'm going to go take my break while this thing rolls through these bongs and notices. <laughs> I'll see you guys here in just a couple minutes.